I think just the the kind of high level, I guess, link between excessive adiposity and perhaps where people are storing it, because I understand there could be a difference whether someone is more preferentially storing that as visceral fat versus subcutaneous. And just so that the listener appreciates how that could increase their risk of, say, cardiovascular disease or type 2 diabetes or whether it's fatty liver or even certain types of cancer. I think a good way to do this is to go through kind of the the process of going from a lean person to a person with obesity, and we can kind of walk through how that proceeds and how it impacts the body metabolically. You you start gaining fat. um, For whatever reason, your calorie intake goes up whether that's due to a change in environment, due to aging, due to, you know, change in diet, you start gaining fat. And what will happen is initially that extra energy that you're taking in will be absorbed by your fat tissue, your adipose tissue, and it will be fine. Your adipose tissue is a professional energy storage organ. It is designed to store energy in your body and up to a certain point it can do that efficiently it can whatever energy you're not burning that day it can take that it can trap it and it can hold on to it in the form of fatty acids and that's fine when it's doing that it is effectively protecting all of your other tissues from that extra energy but what you see is as that proceeds At some point, if you continue to gain fat, you will hit what's called your personal fat threshold. And I'll give credit to Roy Taylor for this concept. He was the one who came up with it and who's made a lot of the evidence for it. Um, And once you hit your personal fat threshold, that is basically the amount of fat storage that you can safely handle before your fat just your tissue just can't hold on to all that extra energy anymore. And what you see at that point is that people are not, if you look physiologically, metabolically at what's going on in their bodies, they're not trapping fat as well. So after they eat a meal and those chylomicrons with fat go from the gut and start circulating in the bloodstream, they stay in circulation for a long time. They're not getting cleared as quickly as in a lean person who has well-functioning adipose tissue. And you also see elevated triglycerides, fats, in the bloodstream in the fasting state. They're just not getting cleared as well. And furthermore, you see that the fat tissue is releasing more fat into the bloodstream in the form of free fatty acids. It's not necessarily that their um, concentration of free fatty acids is higher, but the turnover is higher. You, you have more release of fatty acids and more take up of fatty acids by the other tissues. And so what you're also going to start to see when that storage capacity gets exceeded is you're going to start to see deposition of fat in other organs, in other tissues. You're going to see deposition of fat in muscle tissue, in liver tissue, in pancreas. And that is is a really strong marker of energy poisoning that those tissues are not supposed to have fat in them and so when you see that that's a sign that there's way too much energy circulating in the body and and that's very common by the way you know fatty liver i don't remember what the prevalence is in the united states i think it's over 25 percent or something in adults so it's very very common um but, you know, we live in a, satura- in a society that's absolutely saturated with energy. And so, um, so once that starts to happen, you start to get physiological changes. You're, you're going to get, um, your, your tissues are going to start refusing energy. And one of the ways they do that is by causing insulin resistance. So insulin resistance is saying, to the insulin molecule, insulin would normally tell your tissues to take up glucose, one of the main energy substrates. Insulin resistance is saying, no, I'm full. I already have too much energy. It would be physiologically dangerous for me 
to take up more energy. I can't handle this. So I'm saying, no, I'm creating insulin resistance. And you can, you know, in cells in a Petri dish, you can make them insulin resistant by exposing them to elevated levels of fatty acids, glucose, or amino acids. And you can do it in people too. You just put an IV and you elevate any one of those and you will cause insulin resistance very quickly. So that's one of the things that happens. You get insulin resistance and that causes all kinds of problems that contribute to cardiovascular disease and contribute to diabetes risk. And then for diabetes, it's really a two hit thing. So you have to have the insulin resistance typically. But the other thing that that energy poisoning does is it hits your pancreas and it starts degrading your beta cells. Your beta cells, there are very unique cells. They, um, because of their key role in metabolic regulation, they have to be very sensitive to circulating metabolic fuels. And because of that, they have to, they take up those fuels to sense them. So they're very sensitive to, to energy poisoning. If, if you have this energy poisoning process, and a marker of it, of course, is fat deposition in the pancreas, what will happen is eventually those beta cells, their function will start to degrade. First, you see a degradation of what's called first phase insulin secretion, which is that first bump you get when you first eat food. That'll kind of flatten out. And then eventually you just get insufficient insulin secretion to control your, your sugar at all. And then you have diabetes. So essentially, if you know insulin resistance alone is not enough to produce diabetes. If you have a robust pancreas, you can just keep secreting more and more insulin to overcome that insulin resistance. But when you get that second hit of beta cell failure, that's when people go downhill into insulin resistance, in, excuse me, into type 2 diabetes. That's kind of a, yeah, what I just explained is kind of what I believe is the main path to cardiometabolic disease. Not to say it's the only contributor, but in our current environment, I believe that that is the, the primary way that it goes down. Only uh, last thing I want to mention is that I think physical activity is really important in this regard because for tissues to be overwhelmed by energy poisoning, it's not just about the amount of energy they're being exposed to, it's how much energy can they dispose of as well. And if you have a massive energy sink in the form of muscle contractions, and liver having to supply that as well, then you're, you're creating a sink and you're not going to get the same kinds of uh, energy poisoning that you would get if you didn't have that physical activity. Mm-hmm.